welcome back to my channel my name is Omoyera Oluwat Sosi and if this is your first time of stopping by please support me by clicking on the subscription button and also on the notification bell so that once I upload a new video you'll be among the first person to get the notification on the channel today I'll be showing you how to cut and sew a kimono jacket this is not the type of kimono jacket you see everywhere this is classic unique this is something you can wear to the church to the mosque to the office to any event if you want to look classic and elegant and if this is the video you're interested in please keep on watching these are the measurements you'll be needing for this tutorial the materials and tools you'll be working with is this african print you can use any fabric of your choice but I'll be working with this African print fabric. You have to get a matching thread. I end up using the black thread. A chop to rule your lines. A scissors to cut out your patterns. You have a table to take your vertical and horizontal measurement. You can use any type of ruler. I have this steel ruler that I will work with. And for the building design at the back, I'll be working with this pair. You can choose any kind of bead you want. You can work with strawberry or glass bead. So let's set this aside and move straight into the tutorial. Lengthwise, my fabric is 45 inches. I'm not going to use the fabric like this. I'm going to be working with the cost length of the fabric. So this is how to work with the cost length. You place the table at the top edge of the fabric like this and measure the full length of your jacket. I'll be working with 50 inches and then I went ahead to add one and a half inches to it to make it 51 and a half inch. The one and a half inches is for my Emmy allowance. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to cut it on fold like this. Next, you're going to fold your fabric in half before you apply your body's measurement. Now, this is how to fold in half. And this is what you should have at the end of the day. You can see that I folded my fabric in half. The next thing you're going to do from this point, you're going to mark your body's measurement. The first thing I did, I tried to measure the full length of my jacket to make sure that I'm working with the exact full length. So I have the 51 and a half inches and I'm cool with the length. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mark three and a half inch for the neck width and one inch for the neck depth that is for the back bodies i'm going to take the measurement of the neck width what i have there is four inches so next i'm going to mark the width of my sleeve what i did here i marked 23 and a half inches that's what i mark here and for the bodies of the jacket i'm going to mark quarter of my hip measurement plus six inches that is standard quarter of my hip measurement plus six inches I'm going to mark this measurement all through to the end of the kimono jacket. After that, you're going to connect your marking like the way you see me doing in the video and trim up the parts that you don't need. And don't forget to curve the sleeve into the side seam. After that, you trim up your water part. You can either curve that outside side or leave it straight like this. Way I have mine, I left my sleeves straight. But if you want to go extra, you can curve that pointed edge. That's all. From the center front, I'm going to measure in three inches. So that's what I'm marking now three inches. I'm going to mark it up to the M of the jacket, and that's with the opening we have at the back of this kimono jacket. You're going to connect this with a line to get a straight line that you cut it off. The part that you cut off, you can also use it as the collar. For me, I'm not going to use that collar. I'm going to cut a separate strap for the collar. So this is what you're going to have at the end of the day. So let's work on the slip slant. For the sleeve slant, you are going to measure down half an inch at this point and connect it to the neck width of the kimono jacket. So you mark half an inch here, then you connect it with a slant line, a slant line to the neck width of the jacket.
and now you are going to have four separate patterns to work with so this is what your pattern set should be looking like your kimono pattern you're going to have four sets two for the front and two for the back i've gone ahead to cut and iron my collar i added a fusible or an interfacing or whatsoever you people call it so i folded one part and i leave the other part open like this so the width of my collar is two and a half inches i also have extra fabric for the front pocket design and these long rectangular pieces will be used for the side rush effect of the garment. The last on the list is my bead and I have an invisible thread or a beading thread to add beading to the design. Now let's go to the sewing section of this tutorial. So the first thing you want to do, you want to work on the back for this first. So I'm going to separate the front from the back like this and set the front part of this jacket aside. You want to set this aside and work on the back of the jacket. You just want to take this to your sewing machine and fold the back twice on a 2 8 inch allowance, that is quarter of an inch allowance and you take it to your iron a sewing machine not iron to do sewing machine and stitch that part so that's what i'm doing right now i'm stitching the back to, to ensure a nice finishing at the back of the jacket after i was done stitching the center back of the jacket i went ahead to sew the shoulder line of the sleeve We are back and this is what we have we have an half inch seam allowance along that part you're going to stitch that to the collar you should have the same thing for the other side as well so you can see the half inch seam allowance as well this is the seam allowance you're going to stitch the collar on next we are going to introduce the collar and this is what we have the first thing you're going to do, you're going to fold this collar in half to get the midpoint. After getting the midpoint, you're going to mark a line on that midline so that you know that this is the center back of the jacket. Sideways from the center line, you're going to mark 4 inches. Remember our 4 inches when we were drafting the neckline of the jacket. The four inches that we recorded, we are going to mark it on both sides of the center line, and those marks are the shoulder points. The first one is the first shoulder point, the mid neckline, and the next shoulder point. Next, you're going to pin the collar on the jacket. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to pick the first shoulder mark that shoulder mark on the jacket the shoulder point you're going to pin it on the shoulder line of the collar like this you're going to use the pin to secure that i'm just trying to use the pin to secure that part after you are done you are going to ignore the mid line the mid mark the mid mark you're going to ignore the mid mark and pin the next shoulder point to the shoulder line of the jacket you can see ignore the mid line the next shoulder point you're going to pin it to the jacket like this remember there is a there is an half inch extension when folding your jacket is that half inch extension that you're going to pin on the jacket like this after you're done pinning the collar on the jacket, you're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch it down. So you can see I'm going, you're going to pin all the way down to the M and that's all.
and not when you are pinning on the jacket you are going to be pinning the right side to the right side the right side of the collar to the right side of the jacket please don't make the mistake the right side of the collar to the right side of the jacket so now i'm stitching the collar on the jacket like this Now after stitching the first part of the collar, you are going to fold the seam allowance inside like this. Like the way you see me doing, I use the other part of the collar to cover it up. So that we don't have any seam allowance showing on the inside of the jacket. So, and you are going to stitch on the seam allowance line, not on the collar. On the seam allowance line, I am not stitching on the collar, on the seam allowance line. Make sure that you catch the other part of the jacket that is inside. As for the center part of the jacket, you are going to fold the seam allowance in such a way that the folded part of the collar and the seam allowance is matching. Then you top stitch on it to secure that part of the collar. After sewing the collar on the jacket, next on the list, I'm going to join the side seam of this jacket. Then I'm joining the side seam. Next, you're going to end um, the dress. Remember, we added one and a half inch seam allowance, so I'm going to fold half and one inch. That's how to secure the end of this jacket. Now we are done with the sewing part of the jacket and this is what our kimono jacket is looking like at the moment. I've gone ahead to give it a nice press. You can see how neat everything is looking at the moment. So I'm going to flip this to the back so that you guys can see what the back looks like. You can see how neat and secure the back is as well. So next on the list, you are going to introduce the bead. Now I'm going to show you how to add bead to this jacket. The first thing you want to do, you want to thread your needle. I'm using an invisible thread or a beading thread. You can as well use a normal thread that matches the color of the bead or the fabric. Or you can also use a fishing line because this type of bead I'm using is known as pear and when it is much in a particular area that you are bidding it's, it's going to pull the dress because, because it is going to be heavy 
the first thing you're going to do is to secure a knot and that's what i'm doing right now i'm trying to secure a knot i did it up to three to four times because of the kind of bead i'm using okay after you're done creating your knot you're going to add your beads So after I was done with the uh, beading the thread, I'm going to measure it. Measure it's 8 inches. Remember our center back was on fold and we had 4. When you unfold, it's going to be 8. So the, your first bead is going to be 8, eight inches. So as you bead down, the, inch, the, uh, the beading length is going to decrease. You start from 8, 7 and half, 7 inches, 5, 4. As you beat down, the length of the bead is going to reduce. So this is how to add bead to the center back of the jacket. I will go offline and continue beading this jacket. And once I am done, I will come back and show you guys what it looks like. and this is the final look of our jacket you can see how beautiful the jacket came out and i added a rush effect at the side of the jacket i also add a details pocket at the side of the pocket as well so you can style this in two different way i'm going to unwash the jacket and show you what it look like if you don't gather it at the side and this is what we have and if you like this video please give it a thumb up like and share my video and don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platform and thanks for watching have a nice day and bye